So you finally did it. You cut back on the carbs. You got rid of the sugar. You're finally eating more healthy and clean, but you wake up and you check your numbers and your fasting blood sugar is still elevated. What's going on? Is the diet actually not working? Do you need to be following something else? This is one of the most frustrating things for people dealing with high blood sugar, diabetes, and prediabetes. Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Taranella and I'm here to help you optimize and improve your health. Today, we're going to solve this frustrating blood sugar problem. And by the end of this video, you should understand one, the deep biological reason your body keeps cranking out blood sugar and why you have these elevated blood sugar readings. And two, if a low carb diet is enough to fix this problem. And then three, why your A1C test may be lying to you. Let's jump into it. Okay, so here's the truth that you need to understand right now. Your body basically has its own glucose factory located right inside your liver. And it can create brand new glucose from protein, fat, even in the absence of little or no carbohydrates in your diet. In a healthy person, the hormone insulin acts like an off switch to this factory. But if you have insulin resistance, which is common for people with diabetes and prediabetes, and sometimes just those that are overweight, that off switch is broken. It's basically going to be stuck on all the time. And if your liver becomes deaf to this signal, the insulin signal, it just keeps pumping out sugar into the bloodstream all day long. So that high AM fasting glucose is often a sign that your liver is working against you. And of course, understanding these numbers and why they might be high or normal is the first step in taking control of this problem. And I put together a playlist on diabetes and insulin resistance that breaks down some of the numbers and labs that you want to be following and what they mean and also how to optimize those. I'll put a link in the description below. All right, let's dive a little bit deeper into the mechanisms and tackle this big question, how do we actually fix this problem if and when it's occurring? So the first thing we want to look at, address, and understand is why does the body or the liver become deaf or insensitive to insulin to begin with? So inside every liver cell, there's a master switch, the switch that we we're talking about earlier for making glucose, AKA blood sugar. And it's a protein called FOXO1. And when things are working fine, insulin signals a cascade that basically ends up telling the FOXO1 switch, hey, we have plenty of energy, let's take a break, and it deactivates it. But in a state of insulin resistance, often caused by things like inflammation, excess fat in the liver, also known as NAFLD, that signal from the insulin is weak or broken. And we can think of this like a manager that's sending an email, but the server is down. So in this case, the insulin is the manager and the foreman on the factory floor, the FOX01 never gets the stop work order or message. And so it just keeps ordering more of the production of new glucose all night, all day long. And that's even when your body, your blood sugar, is already high or actually sometimes too high. And that's the core molecular problem that's going on when you're having ongoing elevations in your blood sugar. Now, let me be clear, the signal is still being sent. He just can't hear it, meaning that your body is still producing insulin. It's just numb to its effects, like when you learn to tune things out that are annoying you or you don't want to listen to. And so will a low carb diet eventually fix this well, this is what everyone wants to know. If I just stick with a low carb diet long enough, will my liver fix this switching mechanism? And the answer is it definitely helps a lot immensely, but it's often not enough. It's not enough to just keep cutting carbs, cutting carbs, cutting carbs. Cutting your carbohydrates is definitely a powerful tool because it dramatically reduces the external carbohydrate that's flooding and loading into your body. And this lowers the insulin levels that your body has to produce as well and can improve the sensitivity over time. This is like that annoying background noise going away. Eventually, you'll be able to hear it more clearly when it comes back. But it really takes time to reestablish that sensitivity to that annoying noise. But also, if the insulin resistance in the liver is severe and long-standing, just reducing the external load from what you're eating daily doesn't always fully repair the insulin resistance in that broken internal signaling. In fact, research shows that while low-carb diets rapidly improve many markers, 
fully reversing the hepatic insulin resistance or the liver insulin resistance often requires multi-pronged approaches to get to that end goal where it's fully reset. So in this case, being able to tune back into that annoying noise that you're he hearing may take multiple steps, not just removing the noise itself. It may take things like spending some time in a more quiet place so that your ears can more tune into that signal. So in the case of hepatic insulin resistance or liver overload, things like weight loss can be very helpful. Reducing the fat in and around the liver is really important to restore this proper signaling. And that's where fatty liver comes in because your body is storing all these extra carbohydrate and eventually it starts to create fat droplets in the liver. Well, if you reduce your carbohydrates, lose weight, some of that buildup in the liver, the fatty liver can start to reverse itself. And that's where exercise comes in as well, especially resistance training, high intensity training, but really any kind of exercise is going to independently improve insulin sensitivity in your muscles, taking some of the pressure off the liver. So again, we can remodel some of that fatty deposit in the liver. Stress and sleep management is also a contributor to insulin resistance because stress tells the body to make more sugar, make more glucose. So for sure, we can think of low carb diet as an essential foundation for reversing this process and improving things, but it's not always enough to shift the entire curve. You have to address all the pillars of health to get this thing moving in the right direction. And depending on where you're at on the blood sugar level, you may have to even use medications and other things to really get that curve to shift. Now let's shift gears just for a second and talk about hemoglobin A1C. If your concern is more about the stubborn elevation in your A1C versus daily fasting glucose, you definitely want to understand this. For the vast majority of people, the A1C is a great indicator, an excellent marker, and a true reflection of your average blood sugar over, say, two to three months of time. But for some, there's situations where the accuracy of this test definitely comes into question. And that is if you have anemia or some kind of red blood cell disorder it changes the output of the red blood cells that are coming out of your bone marrow. And it can really throw off the estimation that comes from the hemoglobin A1C. So here's some of the background on that. Your A1C accuracy depends on the normal lifespan of red blood cells, which is typically about 120 days. Anemia in certain red blood cell disorders is gonna change that lifespan. In common anemias from iron deficiency or B12 deficiency, your body's production of new red blood cells can slow down, meaning the existing cells are going to stick around in your blood for much longer. More time in circulation means more time to get coated with glucose. This can lead to a elevation in your hemoglobin A1C test, but it's a false elevation in this sense because it's not really reflecting a change in the blood sugar, just a change in how long those red blood cells are living. Conversely, in other anemias where you have just tons of blood loss, your red blood cells are being destroyed quicker than they should for in the case that you don't actually have anemia but you go donate blood a lot the lifespan of those red blood cells shortens less time in circulation means less time to get coated with glucose which means the result of your a1c can actually be lower than what you would expect it so the bottom line with the a1c test is that it's usually a reliable marker but there are some cases like with anemias where you have to take the result with a grain of salt and make sure you're understanding how that anemia might be impacting your A1C and the lifespan of those red blood cells specifically. And in these cases, you want to cross-reference it with like a daily glucose reading or getting a fasting insulin to kind of round out the picture and accurately understand where your blood sugar is and what's going on with insulin resistance, et cetera. Remember, understanding your blood sugar numbers and what they mean is the first step to fixing them. Don't forget to check out the playlist on diabetes and insulin resistance. Put a link in the description for you, and it should help you have smarter conversations with your provider or doctor to get your numbers into the optimal ranges sooner than later. The bottom line, typically with high fasting blood sugar on a low carb diet is from your liver's broken off switch, just not working. And that's typically due to insulin resistance in the liver itself. So a low carb diet is definitely a powerful foundation to fix this or improve this. It's often not the entire solution. Exercise, medications, herbal things can give your body the push to shut that 
broken switch off. And since that uncontrolled liver sugar production is so tightly linked with fatty liver disease, your next step to improve the health of your body, your blood sugar, and your liver is to find out how to reverse fatty liver. And you can find information on that in this video here.